Okay, so you've got your wood, and now you're ready to process it. Um, in the video that you can see here, I've done this up on my desk. I wouldn't recommend doing this close to a computer like this. Um, it's probably best if you can you can do it uh, down down on the floor somewhere uh, where I like to actually get my knee onto the wood so I can stabilize it um, and, and maybe find something a little bit better than a foam roller. Um, I don't I have to admit I don't do much foam rolling with my foam roller, but I do use it to uh, to, to to put wood on to cut sometimes, which is probably not the best use of it. Um, but what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find a, a good safe space to work. And then you want to cut slices, cut wood, slices of wood that are, I predict, maybe five millimetres, maybe maybe four millimetres, five, 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 four to five millimetres thick, the wood. Now, you're going to want to make it that little bit, whatever you think you're going to want, make it that little bit thicker. And the reason for that is because as you cut the wood, you are going to sorry, as you sand the wood, you're going to be removing material. So that disc of wood is going to get, as you process it, get thinner and thinner and thinner. So maybe a millimetre additional either side, perhaps maybe uh, half a millimetre either side uh, extra. I really, I just judged this by eye, I'm afraid. Um, but you, you'll want that to, to make the processing of the, uh, the disc a little bit easier. It's also worth bearing in mind this is quite fiddly. Uh, you could end up taking off the ends of your fingernails on the sandpaper and the pads of your fingers if you're not careful. So it pays to have that little bit of extra material to work with if you need to. As I mentioned in the first video, I'm using a fine toothed saw. And the reason I'm using a fine toothed saw is it's going to give me a smoother cut. But there is an additional element, there's an additional reason why I'm using that as well. You can do this with a, a harsher toothed saw. It just means you have to be that little bit more careful. But because we want to keep the bark on, as you cut the wood, you are going to, going to be continually running the risk of tearing bark off. And in fact, as I work through a branch that I'm using, so I work in between all of the knots of the wood, just on the straight part. So you'll see me at times actually cutting off a, a, a knot and then start and work on the other side. But what I'll do is I'll start going through the, uh, the, uh, the, the wood quite with quite some vigor to begin with. And as I get closer to the other side, I slow down and I decrease the pressure. And that's so that when I make that final cut through the wood, it is a cut that I make and I'm not pulling the wood and then pulling bark off in the process. You're going to need in total, well, it depends. If you wish to include, if you don't wish to include the blank rune, you need 24 runes in total. I'm just counting that in my head and making sure, yes, it is 24 runes. You're gonna want 24 discs in total to make a rune set. If you wish to include the blank rune, of course, you need 25 discs to work with. So this takes, this can take a little bit of time. And so it's, uh, but it's still worth taking. If you want to make a really good looking set, it's worth taking your time. Once you have your discs, uh, you will need to dry them out. I would not recommend working on sanding them straight away. If you want to get a really good finish, you want to wait for the moisture to evaporate out of that wood. So put your wooden runes, room temperature, just place them somewhere, room temperature, as a general rule, don't put them next to radiators or anything like that. Um, you may end up, uh, you, you may dry the wood out quicker, but I would worry that you would, um, I've never experimented with this, but my, my general belief would be that you may introduce uh, some problems into the wood if you if you do that. Probably, maybe not on this scale, but it's, it's you know, it's a nice relaxing part of the process, if nothing else, is that you can you can place them somewhere and just let them dry. So uh, there's really nothing complicated about it. I'd also um, recommend leaving them uh, out of direct sunlight. Don't put them in direct sunlight. Just put them somewhere where they'll get, and you know, it's, uh, you know, they don't need to be in the dark. Uh, just put them somewhere room temperature, low moisture. Um, room temperature and, and room moisture, the moisture that you generally have in your house, and eventually they will dry out and they will be ready to use. I personally just put them in, pop them in front on the um, uh, on the uh, in front of the TV 
um, seems to work quite nicely. And then you want to come back. Usually, I'd say you can come back in about uh, a week or so. In fact, you may be able to come back and work on them sooner than that. Um, I've never really tried to reduce the process down um, too much in terms of time. Um, so give it a week or so, come back. And then in the next video, what we'll do is we'll look at the process of getting those sanded, uh, getting them marked up with uh, the runes, because I find that the, the, the sanding is the process that takes a lot of time. And once I've got them sanded, I'm desperate to get them marked up with runes and get them looking as fantastic as they're going to look. So we'll do that all in uh, one go in the next video, which will conclude uh, the, the making of the runes themselves. Okay, I will see you then.